Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be building ourselves a thin client using our Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Now for those of you who don't know what a thin client is, it's basically a lightweight computer used to connect to server environments so we could perform serious tasks. So technically our desktops would be called fat clients. For those of you who already use thin clients or use this type of method, leave it in the comments below. I kind of want to know what software you guys use, whether it's RDP or operating system or VNC. I don't know. I, I kind of want to know what your thoughts on it. So to get started, we're going to be using this operating system called WTWare. Now somebody actually converted WTWare over on winterminal.com so it could be installed on a Raspberry Pi. So that's the, actually the image we're going to be using. So first you want to navigate over to that website and then download. Now you want to download the exe and not their zip file because the exe comes with the utility that allows us to install the image on the SD card. So as soon as you're done downloading the system files, install everything and I uncheck a couple of the options because I'm not going to be using network boot but that's up to you if you guys want to play around with that. In my case I just unchecked the last three and then just kept hitting next. Now finally when everything is installed you start up the application and then select the SD card. Here you could actually just install the operating system onto the SD card and it takes average about five minutes maybe even less because it's really small. As soon as you're done with that we're going to head over to our Raspberry Pi and configure everything. Well obviously you're going to need a server that has RDP and all that stuff but I'm not really going to get into the server portion. It's more of this thin client. As soon as you boot up, if you don't have the options come up that looks like this, you can hit the delete key and it'll come up. Now going down these options, you could either use Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And to set up Wi-Fi, you could just select the option all over network media. And then in the Wi-Fi settings, you could actually start up the driver and do whatever you need to do. In the configurations, obviously we're not doing a network boot, so we're going to store everything onto our disk. TCP, we're just going to allow the DHCP because I'm doing this more of a home lab. So I'm just going to let DHCP select my IP address. And if you got an open VPN server and so all that stuff, you could use that as well. Now, here is where the glory is or what you need to do. It's in the edit configuration files. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you could get the image and also where you could get all this information. There's a uh, lots of different configurations but I'm just gonna go through them really quick. The first one obviously being your server. If your desktop or your uh, server is on a specific IP that's where you want to point it to and if you got different uh, a port number you could actually put a colon and then change the port number but in my case I'm just leaving everything default. Next is graphics. I'm using A, B, C, D, E which allows for you know desktop background, mouse, uh, dragging windows, all that other stuff so I'm just leaving it like this. Next thing is disk USB. Now this allows USB pass through. So this basically, if you have like a USB plugged in and you have this option enabled in the settings, it will allow the USB that you have connected on your Raspberry Pi to connect to the remote desktop server. And the last but not least is sound on. So you could actually transfer the audio from your remote desktop. Now, if you hit F2, it will save the options and then you could just connect to your configurator. Now I'm just gonna do a full reboot to show you how fast it is just to get into a prompt. So alt Control delete will do the reboot process. Literally from boot up until where you actually have to put in the information, it's probably within five seconds or less because it doesn't boot into any other operating system. It's really quick. So here we have our main prompt and this is already connected to our server. All we need is a username and password. So I'm gonna be using a test account that I have with one of my servers at home. And it's gonna connect via remote desktop. It, it is pretty quick and it's connecting to a Windows 10 machine. There we have it. it actually looks pretty good on your first connect. Uh, I left the wallpaper on, I left the compositioning on so this way it looks like you know all these windows have like some fluency to it. It's got a slight lag with any remote software you're gonna have that. But let's test out YouTube. And I'm just gonna select the file and show you like how slow or how fast it could be and I got a real kick out of this and audio wise not that much of a lag but video wise you could see it's like skipping but it's not really meant to do you know videos but it's not bad okay so now that we know that sound works and all that other stuff, we, I could show you another thing where you could also see that it passes through. You see how it says USB 1, USB 2 on the Raspberry Pi. Going into one of them, you're going to see I just have some setup files for uh, USB. 
And yeah, pass through works as well. Let's close that out. And that's basically it. I'm gonna disconnect and you're gonna see it's gonna go right back into this menu. Now in this menu, you can actually hit Alt, Control, Delete and it'll just reboot it. There are a lot more options in the configuration that you could set up. Mainly that I was uh, interested in was the kiosk mode. If you guys are building kiosk machines or something like that and you want to use a Raspberry Pi, in the settings itself, you could actually have a point and start up into a Chrome browser and turn it into a kiosk mode. So that's very interesting in itself. And uh, again, all the configurations and all that stuff will be listed you know, in a website. I'm just gonna leave everything down in the description below. That's it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this particular setup, also hit that in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.